Hello, hello. Welcome to part two of When Is It Okay to Lie? So if you missed part one, you can go back. And I shared an amusing story of a time I lied when I was a child. And there was something that I wanted to add to that, but I wanted to keep to that point. And so this is part two of When Is It Okay to Lie? And first though, before I get into that, I do want to introduce myself. If you are new to this channel, my name is Beth Brown. Welcome, thank you for stopping by. And I am a breakthrough coach, which means that I help my clients to elevate their lives after heartbreak or trauma so that they can have happier relationships, healthier relationships, thrive, flourish. And a lot of what I speak on focuses in on forgiveness, self-forgiveness, evicting fear. Fear is at the root of a lot of our problems, including lying. Yes. As I shared in part one, I told a lie because I was afraid. Yeah, that's how I got myself into lying in that situation. I want to talk today about us, you, me. Most likely, you lie to yourself more than anyone else has ever lied to you. I know that I have definitely lied to myself more than anyone else has ever lied to me when I think back over lies, at least that I know of, <laughs> right? So here's the thing. Lies make us angry, right? Think, I don't want you to get into, you know, an angry spiral, but think about a time someone told you a lie and how you felt about it when you found out they lied to you. Most likely, you were, at the very least, a little irritated, and at the very most, absolutely livid, right? So, of course, depends on what the lie is and betrayal and all that, but the person who betrays you the most, most likely, is you. Just like in my life, the person who has betrayed me most has been me. What do I mean by that? I mean that a lot of the reason why we struggle with forgiving ourselves is because we, without realizing it, are mad at ourselves because we caught ourselves in a lie. So for example, if I say to myself, I am going to write a book. And then five years later, I never wrote that book. Whether I realize it or not, I am beginning to feel a little bit angry at myself. Whether I realize it or not, I'm beginning to feel like I'm not accomplishing the things in my life that I set out to do that I wanted to do. Why? Because I told myself that I was going to do it. And when I didn't do it, guess who I lied to? Myself. I didn't keep my word to myself, right? I lack integrity with myself if I say, I'm going to write a book and then I never do it. So, we want to make sure that we are having integrity with ourselves. When we say we're going to do something, we want to make sure we keep that commitment to ourselves. And it's not always easy, right? Just to go back to writing the book example, because it's just a very easy universal example where I think a lot of people could relate, maybe not to obviously wanting to write a book, but anything. Um, I want to travel to this country. I want to do this. I want to do that. And telling yourself that you're going to do it, but then never doing it uh, makes us doubt ourselves, make us feel like we're fakes. And, you know, we end up not feeling proud of ourselves because we realize whether we admit it to ourselves or not, that 
we're not being true to what we said. We're not keeping our promises to us. This could be with losing weight. This would could be with um, addictions. A lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop watching porn. I'm going to stop spending, overspending, whatever it is. And then in the addiction, because the addiction itself is not taken care of, um, things keep going. And then we're like, oh my gosh, I never get it right. I'm always failing at this. I'm always, I'm always doing what I'm saying. I'm and I'm always not doing what I'm saying I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. So we get angry at ourselves because whether we realize it or not, we're angry. And this is something in order to get out of that, to get breakthrough, to start keeping our words to ourselves and having integrity with integrity with ourselves is where coaching comes into play. The circle of friends that you have around you comes into play. If you are hanging out and spending time with other people who are like, hey, yeah, I want to write a book too. I'm going to do that too. Or I'm going to do this. And they never do it. If you're surrounded by people who don't have integrity with themselves, who are lying to themselves, then it's going to be kind of hard for you to be around uh, people who are going to like push you, right? So your friend circle, making sure you get friends around you who have integrity with themselves and keep their words to themselves. So coaching, your friendship circles, depending on what it is, it, it, particularly if it goes into an addiction type of area, therapy, connecting with the right therapist to get the tools and the support that you need as well as spiritual because a lot of times addictions there is a spiritual component that uh is important to have deliverance from as well so having not only the right therapist to support you with breaking the addiction of whatever it is but also even having the right spiritual um guide with you written you know all pastors are not equal, right? Some of them don't have integrity. So you want to make sure whoever you're vetting, whoever you're working with, whether it's a therapist, a coach, a friend, um, a pastor, that you're vetting them that they themselves have integrity, right? You're, you're going to uh, not just sign up to work with someone and get support with someone who you know nothing about. <laughs> so you always want to do that, right? Um, but in order for us to begin having integrity with ourselves, we oftentimes need that support, that encouragement. And that's, that's one thing in one area of, that a lot of times we lie to ourselves about. The other thing that we sometimes lie to ourselves about which might sound uh, a little odd being that I am a breakthrough coach and a result of someone working with me for even just 20 days is them feeling more confident about themselves is that they lie to themselves about being better than they are. <laughs> Think the late Kevin Samuels, for example, okay? A lot of times women became very angry and felt very offended by him regardless of anything whether you agree or disagree with him what he was doing was giving honest feedback to women and when you have lied to yourself a lot thinking that maybe you may be better than thinking and telling yourself that you are better than what you really may be. That can come across as very shocking to hear the truth. And so it became offensive. So a lot of times we have lied to ourselves so much by telling ourselves we're better than what we are right? Even if you look beautiful and you're gorgeous on the outside, you may think that that's all that's important. But what about the inside, right? 
and vice versa. You may be a beautiful person on the inside, but if you haven't showered for a week and you haven't maintained your hair, your body hygiene is a mess, you're not really very pretty, right? Or attractive. It's more like, go take a shower. So, you know, a lot of times we will lie to ourselves and pretend that we are better than we are. And sometimes I think even with social media, we get into this mode of, you know, posting all the highlights from our lives or looking at the highlights of other people's lives. And we think that, and that becomes what we think is reality for us or for others. And the reality is none of us, not me, not you, no one has it perfect or has it all together all the time, right? But we kind of get into this mindset or this frame of mind where we think we have it all together when we really don't. And then when life happens or someone tells us about ourselves, that lie that we told ourselves comes into a smashing uh conflict with when the feedback, honest feedback that we may get. So yes, this is another way we lie to ourselves. Again, this is why it's important, even with our friends, we want friends around us who are going to call us out and be like, I have a friend and she'll be like, Beth, what were you thinking? Beth, are you serious right now? I sometimes do not like talking to her. I'll be honest, sometimes those conversations with that friend rub me a little bit the wrong way, but she's my friend. She's giving me feedback and she's telling me about myself and she's, she's doing it in a place of love because as my friend, she wants to see me have the best life, right? That's what a real friend does. And a real friend is not just going to be like, yes, Beth, yes, you're wonderful, yes. Oh, girl, go girl, you're just amazing. Cause you know what? Sometimes I'm just not amazing. <laughs> it's true. None of us are always 100% amazing, but sometimes we delude ourselves and we pretend and we lie to ourselves and we try to make ourselves think that we are. Um. So our number one enemy, a lot of times, that sabotages us is ourselves. It's not from the outside. It's not the world. It's not society. It's not, it's not even that man or that woman who broke your heart. A lot of times, it's you. You. It's me, right? Um... We can, for example, speaking of men or women who broke our heart, right? We can see red flags. We see things. We know. But then we tell ourselves, we make up these stories about like, oh, well, he or she just needs like, you know, they have potential. They just like need a little extra tender, loving care. And so we just pour ourselves into trying to help and build that person up. Meanwhile, they are just a huge red flag and not safe emotionally or spiritually or physically even sometimes for us to be around, right? But we've lied to ourselves thinking we've got the situation under control or it's fine um, or it will all just somehow work out or we, you know, just like focus in on the good with that person and um, decide to, you know, ignore those red flags. So, uh that's us lying to ourselves. And yes, it does not mean that the person who hurt us is not responsible, right? They are responsible. You know, if someone hurts you, that person is still responsible for their actions. But also, at the same time, part of healing is becoming honest with ourselves. The first step, the most important step for healing, for forgiving yourself, for forgiving someone else, for being able to love yourself, for being able to love someone else, for just enjoying your life is to be honest with yourself. 
Get yourself surrounded by friends who are going to support you and also be honest with you. Get yourself coaches. We could work together or it could be another coach. It depends on what your situation is that you're looking for, right? I focus on breakthroughs to help people, you know, transform their mindset, their heart set, and their physical life after heartbreak or trauma, right? So, you know, my specialty expertise is not in finances, right? And so that would be a different type of coach if you were like, my financial life is a mess. Well, then you would not work with me. You would work with a financial coach. Um, so you see, you would find the right coach for you, possibly depending on what it is, the right therapist for you. Um, who are you following for your spiritual care? You know, making sure that you vet these people because there's false prophets and then there's true prophets of God, false ministers, false teachers, true teachers and ministers of God, right? We don't want the liars. That's where a lot of times church hurt and all those things come in. So we want to like really vet even the people who we're looking to for spiritual guidance, that they're true women and men of God, not the false ones, right? Um, but getting our spiritual care and uh, yes. And then of course, our time with God is very important because here's the one, one, one person who's perfect and ultimately will never, ever, ever lie to you. And that's also why a lot of times people are offended by God because the truth hurts. Honestly, honesty can be painful. It can be our pride can get in our way. And so we feel offended when God says, thou shalt not fornicate. And we're like, oh, but that doesn't sound fun. Well, there's a reason for it. Thou shalt not lie. Oh wait, there's a reason for it. And I don't mean that we have to be all legalistic and just start like checking things off on a, on a list. Like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm not doing that. We don't need to like get super uh, nitpicky and pick ourselves apart. But what I am saying is God is going to be honest with you and he's going to let you know what's up. <laughs> he is a gentleman, so for the most part, he's going to speak gently to us. But sometimes we fall on our faces and then we're like, God, why'd you let me fall on my face? Here's something. I've shared this before and I feel like I might be getting a little off topic, which is something that sometimes happens when I start going and I get one idea after another. But um, I had God tell me in multiple ways about someone who I should not have dated. He gave me a dream. That, that man was not specifically in my dream, but he was represented by a foreigner type person. Um, I was in my hometown uh, and there was this person that did not belong, that was like foreign to my hometown. And I knew that it meant that there was someone in my life who was foreign and was not supposed to be in my life. And there was really actually no one in my life who was not supposed to be there except this person, but I didn't want to listen. Um, I saw, for example, in his, his apartment, when I went to his apartment, his ex-wife's clothes, her possessions were still in his apartment. That's a big red flag if I ever saw one. <laughs> Um, a friend of mine had a dream and she said, Beth, I see you in really muddy water, uh, which is kind of symbolic of like demonic, uh, activity, um, very muddy, dark, really nasty water. And it was sticky. And if you don't get out and she specifically spoke to me about this person, she was like, if you don't get out of that situation, you're going to have a hard time getting out of it. And then another friend of mine said, you know, Beth, it's just not a good idea. I just don't have a good feeling about this person. Guess what I did? I continued to spend time with him. And guess what happened? I ended the relationship. 
And then I do oftentimes, it depends on the person and everything, but I like to end things amicably. And so anyway, long story short, I invited him over to get his, his belongings and everything. And I, I'm still, I, I do tend to be friendly. And sometimes with some of my exes, I am actually friends with them. Like I'll talk to them, I'll see them, I'll still meet up with them and do coffee or something just to catch up, right? Um, but, so that wasn't unusual, but this person was dangerous and this was not the type of person I should be having um, any type of friendly relations with after ending things. Um, should not have done that, but I did. And as it turns out, he, you know, sexually assaulted me in my kitchen. So God gave warnings, right? I could be mad and be like, God, why did you let this happen? Couldn't you have been honest with me? I could have been just like, well, you know, this is all his fault. And it is his fault. He should have controlled himself. When I said, I don't want your dick. I don't think that's a curse word. So I think it's okay to say that in this video. I don't think it's going to get the video flagged. Um, when I tell you that, you as a man need to respect that and understand I'm serious, right? So he was fully responsible for his actions. But. I also was fully responsible for my actions. So what I had to learn in my healing was how to navigate being honest with myself and facing up to what I was responsible for and my choices of choosing to ignore and kind of delude myself and that it was going to be all okay. Um, while forgiving myself, and not beating myself up over it, right? So <laughs> it was, you know, a, a, a messy healing and learning experience about myself, about lies, about the lies I was telling myself, about my choice to not be honest. And ultimately, and I'm not saying this from a place of unforgiveness towards myself because I have fully forgiven myself, but ultimately, in that situation, I was my own worst enemy because I was not really facing up and I was not going along with the signs, the red flags. I was choosing to continue, even though it was like glaring, <laughs> like warning, 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 right? Um, and so forgiving ourselves does involve taking responsibility but also like releasing ourselves and not beating ourselves up and being like this is a learning experience what i can now say is honesty is the key to relationships with ourself with god with our friends with our lovers with our husbands with our wives with someone we're dating with our co-workers at work with our business associates or business partners, if we're entrepreneurs, it is literally the key. And God, ultimately, because none of us are perfect. So at some point, you know what? You and I were probably going to fall into that trap, so to speak, or that temptation and give into it and, and lie to ourselves on something. But God is the one person who will always tell you. He will always tell me. He will tell us 100% all of the time the truth. So what I advise above all else, um, being more important than even having the right friends around you, connecting with the right coach, connecting with the right therapist, connecting with the right um, pastor or minister or teacher, right? Beyond that, the most important person for you and me to connect with is God because he's the one person who is perfect and is not going to lie. And you always can bet that you're going to get a return on that and always get the truth, okay? So this is the end of part two for when is it okay to lie? Um, as a coach, I am going to let you draw your own conclusions about when it is or is not okay to lie. Uh, so you get to decide and you can go back and watch the previous video 
and get the information on that as well as this. And then what do you think? I'd love to hear in the comments below, write what your thoughts are on when is it okay to lie? Is there anything in this video that stood out to you that you were like, huh, cool, or yeah, Beth, I disagree with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree. Feel free, please, also to like this video. Follow me. <laughs> so, yes, because there's going to be more videos coming. All right, and have a wonderful day. And be honest with you. It is the most loving thing you can do for yourself. All right? Peace.